So what I'd like to do is to set you guys on an exercise. Um, it might be kind of fun. I think we can finish it by the end of the day. Um, but essentially what it means, what it involves is this. Let's see, let me go back to PowerPoint. So I've set up this exercise. I created six different faunas. And they are of three different sizes. One with 10 species, one with 25 species, and one with 50 species. Thanks, Kate. So the, what should be the easiest is 10 species, all with the same abundance. OK? Then a bigger fauna, also with even abundance. So 25 individuals, sorry, 25 species each of four individuals each. And then probably pretty hard is a sample with 50 species, each of which, even abundance, but they've only got two individuals each. Okay, so we, we kind of expect easy, harder, harder. But then for each of the fauna sizes, I created some imbalance in fauna size. So here, same 10 species. Four of them have 20 individuals. Two of them have four individuals, and four of them have three individuals. So I created four common species and the rest uncommon species, six of them. Okay? In the worst case, this was a really mean one, in this one with 50 species, there was one species that was 51 individuals. And then 49 species that have one individual. So you know those are going to be pretty badly sampled. Okay? So here's the deal. <coughs> First of all, data sheets. Pass this around if you would. Take one and pass it along. What I did was I created a 10 by 10 matrix and filled it in with characters off of my keyboard. Each one of those characters is a species. Okay? So when you do a sample, you're going to fill in the species that you detected here. And if it's your first sample, for that set of species, you're going to put ones. OK? And then all the rest of the way down, it's going to be zeros, because whatever those other species are, you didn't detect them. Second, second sample, you will re-detect some of the species you got in your first sample, and you won't re-detect some others. And you'll find some new species. OK? so. These are, it's really critical that you keep the plastic bag because the plastic bag says case A, case B, C, D, or E, or F. Those correspond in no clear way to the order of these lines, so don't second guess me. Okay? Um, but essentially, take your plastic bag. I think we may have to team up one pair of people. Um, and then I'll tell you what I want you to do in this exercise. Okay. This took a lot of time with a pair of scissors, as you can imagine. Do you guys mind sharing? OK, so what I'd like you to do is, first of all, write at the top of your data sheet the case letter that it says on your plastic bag. OK, so that's case D, for example. And then what I'd like you to do is just kind of 
open your plastic bag like this, move it around, muck, muck it around with your fingers, and reach in and pull out 10 pieces of paper. Okay? 10. So we're going to do 10 samples of 10. Each, each time we're going to sample 10 individuals, and you're going to write down the species in that first column. Sorry, yeah, the species in the first column and ones for each of the species you detected. So pull out 10 pieces of paper. Organize them so that you can see which species you got. So for example, here's one where we have an A, a C, an N, an L, an H, an F, a V, a Q, an S, and an X. So right away you can guess you're one of those 50 species faunas, right? <laughs> Um, so you want to write those down in this column and put ones in sample one. Okay? So do that ten times. It shouldn't take you a lot of time. So, okay, so put like, you know, H and a one. A and a one. F and a one. I and a one. Okay? So we don't care about abundance, remember. Town's a bird guy. Abundance measures mean nothing. Boy, I could get into trouble saying that, can't I? Yes? It just means you saw a second individual of that species. Just, no, just put a one. You detected the species. Again, I don't care about abundance. So if you look, look up here, right away what you see is our three fauna sizes, right? And just qualitatively, if you look, you see that the ones where the fauna is 10, we basically flatten off pretty quickly, okay? But notice that these two, which are case A, which is 10 individuals of 10 species, they flatten off at the value of 10, which is true. Whereas these species, or these samples, I'm guessing are case B, looks like it. Uh, and yes, looks like it. So those are case B where we had some imbalance. We had some rare species. And notice that those have leveled off, but they've leveled off at nine species, not at 10. Okay, now our, our life gets worse. We get some up here that, that uh, get up to the 25. I have no idea why there are some 26s. Okay, somebody's a splitter in instead of a lumper. <laughs> but anyhow, some people are getting up to 25 really quickly. There's a case C, that's got to be that and that. Those two are these. And then these are the 25 species faunas where there are rare species, okay? And then I kind of just made the impossible situation. Let's look for some case E's. This one is case E. And it looks like this, uh, that's gotta be a case F. These are case F. These are, 49 species with one individual each. So it's kind of just by luck if you see those species twice. You could keep sampling 10 species, 10, or 10 individuals, 10 individuals, 10 individuals, and eventually that curve would get out there and hit an asymptote, and eventually you would see all 50 species. But it's gonna take you a long time. And so effectively, if you look at this curve, it's just going on up, okay? That's like some of those published accumulation curves that we were looking at. So right away you see that it's easier to sample small faunas, floras, and right away you see it's easier to sample situations where all individuals are fairly common, where you don't have really rare things, okay? So that's kind of 
the, the coarse resolution view of the first question. I just wanted you to see the accumulation of species, and I wanted you to see it thinking about the situation, balance versus imbalance, and species richness. Now, again, you're welcome to go from, for some tea or some coffee, but we basically have an hour and a bit. Type that matrix into a text editor, follow the instructions in the Estimate S manual very carefully, hit that format right, and what I want to know next is your case number and your expected number of species that Estimate S gives you. Okay, it'll be the chow to mean column down at the end. But as soon as you have the data set typed in, try to get it into Estimate S. And please, the first person who gets it into Estimate S, raise your hand, which is to say when Estimate S says yes, I'll take it. Raise your hand and let's, come, let's look at it on your computer. Okay? Okay, just watch this just for a second. When you get the, the um, output from Estimate S, here are the samples. Remember we did 10 samples. Here is the mean number of species represented in those samples. And so you can see the mean of any single sample is 4.92. And the mean when we have five samples is almost eight. And by the time we get to 10, we've seen nine species. This was case B, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so case B is 10 species, but some of them are common and some of them are rare. And so this is an interesting thing because Brian never saw the 10th species. It's there, we actually checked, okay? So we can look at the number of singletons. We can look at the number of doubletons. And then we're going to go farther to the right. Chow to the mean. And essentially, what are we seeing? But it starts out estimating a little bit above nine, but with more and more data, it converges on the wrong answer. Okay? So that's an interesting one where the truth is 10, easy as far as fauna size, but here at the end, we're getting the wrong answer. Now, we should point out the lower bound, that's kind of actually odd. The lower bound is 9.44, even though the mean is 9. And the upper bound does include the right answer. Okay? But right there, you're seeing the problem when you have really rare species. Okay? Anybody else close? You got any results? Bring them on up. You show it to us. I don't want to do this. You don't want to do it. No. Go all the way to the left. Okay. <laughs> so this is an interesting one. This is an interesting one. This is going to be case D. So we just saw a case B where the observed number of species was uh, 9. The expected at the end was 9, but the truth is 10. Mm -hmm. 
And now we've got a case D. Um, so the observed at the end, I think I saw 23. 23, yeah. Okay. And case D, the truth is 25. Go farther, farther to the right. Ace, there's 24.81 is the mean. Ice, 25.25. And Chow, two, 24.08. So 24 to 25, depending on the indicator. Okay, so we're kind of starting to see some things here. This case D is the harder one for the middle fauna size. So this is 25 species. Uh, it, it's running, Kate, don't worry. 25 species, some common, some rare. Okay. Anybody else have one? one two. 